Well, let's get some more analysis. I'm here in the studio with Richard Verley, who is the France correspondent for the Swiss newspaper Blick. Thank you very much indeed for Good joining evening. us. Um, how do you think these events are being digested here in France? Well, I believe um, here the relationship between President Macron and Ali Bongo were never very good. You have to remember that last March, Macron went to Gabon for the One Forest Summit, but it was not a bilateral visit. It was a multilateral summit, and it was seen as a way to distance himself from the power in Libreville for obvious reasons. Everybody knew, all experts knew that this presidential election, the one that took place over the weekend, would be very tense because Ali Bongo would probably declare himself elected while uh, he was not in reality elected by the people of Gabon. That's what happened. So my understanding is that in France at the moment, everybody is waiting. Uh, and you, you would notice that the French government has condemned the coup d'etat, has condemned the putsch, but has not asked for Ali Bongo to be reinstated as legitimate leader. That makes a striking difference with Niger, where President Macron is constantly asking for Mohamed Bazoum, the president who was overthrown by the military, to come back to power because he is the legitimate president. Okay, so earlier in the day when we heard that call for help from Ali Bongo in his presidential palace, he managed to get a video message out there. Um, he can't have been expecting France to be one of the countries that would come rushing to his aid. Well, if, I, if, if the excerpt that I've seen is correct, he's not asking anything to France especially. He is, uh, he's launching an appeal for some friends to make noise. To me, that sounds quite a strange video. He doesn't appear as a president who is ready to fight for his comeback. He appears quite weak. He stays in his armchair. We don't even know if the video was shot in Libreville. He said that he is in his presidential residence. But, uh, but to me, Ali Bongo at the moment has been clearly defeated, defeated by the general, which was one of his closest advisor, head of the Republican Guard. I don't see and I don't think he has the means for a political comeback. Do you think people saw this coming? Were there any warning signs that... Uh Gabon was going to head the same way as Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali. Were there signs of a military coup d'état? That I don't know. What was expected is was a political crisis. Everybody I talked to before the election of Gabon was anticipating a crisis because everybody knew that Ali Bongo would declare himself the winner despite the reality. And the reality is probably that his opponent, like it was the case in 2016, won the election. While Ali Bongo is now declared, has now declared that he won by 63%. So political crisis was expected. That's the reason why the borders were closed, internet disconnected, uh, uh, France 24 and other media uh, disconnected. Um, and one thing that uh, is quite noticeable is that among the first decision by this military junta or this military committee is to reopen the internet and to re-allow international television network. That's quite a sign of confidence for uh, a general just uh, taking power. So I'm just wondering, I mean, you don't think by the sounds of things that Gabon is going to try and marginalise France or that same anti-France sentiment exists there than that exists, say, in, in other former French colonies, where we've seen it much more True. blatantly. True. Well, you never know how a situation like this might develop. But at the moment, uh, you have seen no, no, nothing even in the streets. Nobody shouting against France. Nobody shouting against Macron. Um, while there is a military pres presence from France in Gabon, like in Niger, so you could have you could have that type of noise. This type of noise at the moment doesn't appear to be uh, the case. And the general himself, the spokesman for the army, he did not mention France at all. So this anti-France kind of reflex, this anti-France uh, stigma. We are not seeing it in Gabon at the moment, probably because the army expect France to uh, marginalise Bongo and to open a new chapter for, bon for Gabon. OK, so you don't see this as being another no, sign I don't of see the end of now, France Afrique. Now, imagine, no, I, I don't see this at the moment as another sign of uh, France weakening importance in Africa. But viewed from other countries, viewed from far from Africa, viewed from Asia, it will be seen as this. 
I don't think it's the reality, but you can't avoid the fact that viewed from China, viewed from Latin America, uh, people will see, oh, another coup d'etat in the French sphere of influence. So yes, it will be seen as a proof that France is weakened in Africa, but it doesn't mean that it is the case, especially in Gabon. So you don't see the Russians, for example, uh, swooping in to try to fill a void left by France as they have done elsewhere? At the moment, no. And there is no political connection between the Gabonese army and Wagner Militia Group, for example. It has not been documented. But once you open a vacuum of power, anything can fill in. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, again, nothing against France in Gabon, nothing publicly said about France. But it may come in the days, uh, in the following days, if the expectation from the generals are not met. Okay. Well, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us, Richard Vell, thank you. France correspondent for the Swiss newspaper Blick. Thank you very much indeed.